So we've defined matrices and vectors. Let's talk now about how we might go about grabbing values from those matrices or vectors or assigning them new values or getting rid of them, things like that. Basically, let's talk about indexing. So here, this example right here, if you remember the vector v1, v1 was this. So if I wanted to grab a specific value of v1, I could do something like this where I put in parentheses the element that I want to grab. So I'm going to grab the first element of the vector v1. So that's going to assign the value 2 to this new variable t10 and I'm going to equal to the value 2. So we use these parentheses to index into vectors and matrices. If we come back to our matrix A, so remember what matrix A is, we also use matrices to grab values from matrices and we do a row column indexing. So the first element will be the row that we want to grab. So maybe I want to grab row two, column three. So row two, column three would be this value right here. So there it is, I get the value of eight because I've just grabbed the second row, third column. So parentheses separated by columns are how we grab values from vectors or matrices. I can also grab subsets of values. So that was me grabbing a single value. If you remember what the vector v3 is, I can grab the first and second value of that vector by putting the indices inside of brackets. I'm still using the parentheses to index, but now I'm specifying a list inside of that. So I'm going to grab the first two elements of v3, or I can grab the first and the third. So this would be the first and the third, like that. So one thing to notice here is that MATLAB uses one-based indexing, the first element of a vector is the element one, not a zero like some other languages use. So MATLAB uses one-based indexing. So that's how you grab, you use a similar thing for setting values. So here's my vector v1. Let's say I wanted to change the value of the first element of this vector. So now we just kind of flip things. To index, I use my parentheses, and now I'm setting it equal to a value. So if I wanted to set the first element of the vector v1 equal to 0, I would just say v1 of 1 equal to 0. And that changes the first element of v1 to 0. Similarly, I can set multiple values of a vector equal to something. So here I'm going to set the first two elements of v3 equal to the value 1. So they've changed from 0 to 1. So that's very useful. Sometimes you want to remove a element from something. So here's V1. Maybe I want to completely remove one of these elements. So if I want to remove the first element, I will assign it equal to an empty bracket. So those are just square empty brackets. So after doing this, my vector V1 is just down to a scalar now, actually. So I've removed this V3. I could remove the second and third indices. In this way by assigning them to basically be empty. So it removed these and collapsed it down to 1 and 6. So that's how you can remove elements from a vector. MATLAB is also good at something called logical indexing. I think the best way to do this is with an example. So if I have this list of 100 numbers, maybe I want to know which of these numbers are less than some threshold, say less than 0.1. So I'm going to assign a value or a variable called small end, and it's actually going to be equal to this, x less than 0.1. So this is actually a logical expression, and MATLAB will evaluate this as true or false. So after doing this, I'm going to end up with a variable called small end. The length of it is the same length as x, and each entry of small end is a true or false, a 0 or a 1, based on whether this logical expression was true or false. So right here, what we're saying is that the third element of small end is true because apparently the third element of x is less than 0.1. So if we come back up here to the third element of x, the third element of x is 0.04, which is less than 0.1, and that's why that was evaluated as true. Similarly, the first element was evaluated false because 0.43 is not less than 0.1, so it was false. So this is a quick way to identify 
elements of a vector or a matrix that satisfies some logical expression. And that's a very fast way to do things. Again, you don't need to write a for loop to loop through and do this individually. You can just let MATLAB do this logical indexing in a vector sense just with one simple computation. If you don't like this logical list, so one thing that's nice about small n is it's the exact same length as x. The number of elements or length of x was 100, and the length of small n was 100. So I could actually do this. x of small n, I can evaluate those, and it's going to do an element-wise evaluation. And this tells me all the values of x that are less than 0.1. There's apparently 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's 10 of them that were less than 0.1. And these are the values, not the indices. The indices were apparently the third, and somewhere around 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, somewhere around 33. Here's one here. So these are the values. If you want to know what indices were actually true, the find command is very useful. So find is going to return all the spots of small end that are true. So 3, 32, 40, 55, 60, 77. These are the actual indices of x that were less than 0.1. So that's a very useful thing to do as well if you want to reduce a logical expression that's giving you trues and falses down to actually the list of indices. Sometimes having just the list of indices is nice, and the find command is useful for doing that, for returning, transforming zeros and ones into just the elements that are true. Another notation that gets used for indexing a fair amount is what I call kind of the colon notation. So again, let's start with just this random list of numbers. And maybe I want to grab just the first 10 elements. Well, instead of having to write this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, to grab the first 10, I could equivalently do this, 1 colon 10. And what 1 colon 10 does is it actually creates a list that starts at 1, goes through 10 in increments of 1 to create the list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the colon notation is very useful for compactly constructing lists. And you don't have to do it in increments of 1. You could do it in increments of 2. So we could go from 1 up to 20 in increments of 2. So that's all the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. You could do 20 in increments of negative 1 down to 1. So that will create a list that starts at 20 and goes down to 1 in increments of negative 1. You could do this, you could do fractions. You don't have to go in increments of one, you could do it in increments of fractions. So go up in quarter steps. And that is very useful sometimes for creating short lists in a very compact way using colon notation, either to construct a list or to index into something if you want to use integers.